Hey everybody! Hope everybody's doing all right today. So how are how how are you? How is everyone? Hope everyone is having a good week. Looking forward to the weekend. I know I am. I have had an extremely busy week this week. So I hope everybody else is doing all right. And I'm glad you guys could make it tonight to the show. So. Wasn't able to make it on Tuesday. Wasn't able to get a video going. Been really busy this week and last week. I've got two videos that are already recorded, just hadn't been, uh, just hadn't been finished up. I have a mouse video that I'm putting up uh, in a week or two, and also a new video on how to avoid uh, bed bugs when you travel. So I did have people ask me what I do. Um, a lot of people don't know. I mean, I guess if you've been here for a while, a lot of people do know that I travel long distance throughout the state of Virginia to deal with bed bugs. And so I am going to do a video. I've actually already recorded it. It's a long one, so I'm probably going to do a premiere with that one uh, about how to avoid bed bug infested hotels and what to do if you actually end up in a hotel with bed bugs. So I did do a video on that. I just need to edit it, put it together. Taylor Welsh, hey. Uh, they came in. They said, does Crossfire still work effectively? Been doing some research on it. Just picked up a bottle of it. I have not actually had any problems with Crossfire not working yet. I've been using it for probably about four years, almost four years, and I have not had any problem with it whatsoever. The thing is, I don't think that Crossfire will develop a problem with immunities, uh, with that the bugs will develop immunity to it, unless they develop an immunity to pyronal butoxide, which I don't see that happening, um, because pyronal butoxide, which is in Crossfire, works as kind of like a catalyst in that it will allow for... Um, it actually inhibits the ability for an insect to develop immunity to pesticide. That's one of the side effects of pyronal butoxide. So I don't think that the uh, bed bugs will become immune to it. Like bedlam, which is a, a product that MGK produced before Crossfire, does not have pyronal butoxide in it. And that's why I think that bed bugs started to develop an immunity to bedlam. But so they, so they came out with Crossfire. But Crossfire is just just pretty good. It's pretty good stuff. Unless they outlaw it for some crazy reason. I don't see uh, bed bugs. I, I think it's honestly the silver bullet. I think it's a uh, very, very good chemical for bed bug control. So, if that answers your question, I don't think it will ever stop working. I did two bed bug Todd jobs tonight. I really need to stop biting my nails. It's a bad habit. So I just realized I bit my nails. MC says, I love the sound of roaches dropping and hitting the ground. Ah, got to admit, that's a good one. So Taylor Wells says, okay, great news. One last question. Would I have to spray in the bathroom and kitchen areas or just the bedrooms and the living room? I appreciate the answers. I treat the baseboards throughout the entire house, even the bathrooms, and I'll tell you why. I did a, a, a job uh, three years ago in the northern Virginia area. It's the very first job I ever did long distance in Virginia. And we found that they were coming through the bathroom uh, from other rooms. Uh, they were, what he had done before I got there, they, it, it actually caused them to chase them into the other rooms of the house, including the bathroom and the kitchen. Um, so when I go into a house, one of the things a lot of people, and this is one of the reasons that heat treatments aren't very successful, is because a lot of times when you go in behind a customer, um, you know, one of the first things people do when they find out they have bed bugs is they go to the store and they buy pesticides and they spray it to kill their bed bugs. And a lot of the pesticides that you buy over the market or over the counter are actually highly repellent. And so you'll run the bed bugs into other rooms of the house. And so um, a lot of times people won't even treat their bathroom. You know, if you if you go and, and you go to a house and someone's been treating for bed bugs, a lot of times they just treat the area the bugs are, like the mattresses and the box springs and the baseboards and stuff in that room, and they don't do anything else. So it, it's a really good idea to thoroughly treat the entire property because 
if you um, if they are running bed bugs from the bedroom into other rooms of the house where they're you know where you've got crossfire and it's a non repellent then the bed bugs don't even know it's there They'll, they might feel that they could stay there um, cat T says hey Jason cat here I get an ad on your videos for a product called bug slayer do you recommend it well I don't recommend any YouTube ads um, I know YouTube does this thing where they monetize and they they put you know advertisements on videos they think you would want to see if you watch you know an exterminating video like mine um, I usually don't don't ever recommend anything YouTube tries to sell but let me take a look and see bug slayer bed bug killer I'm reckoning it's a bed bug killer that's what it says here Number one, natural bed bug killer. That's already probably something I wouldn't buy just because it says natural on it. Because that's a catchphrase for crap. Um, it says, let's see. It kills bed bugs, ants, spiders, and roaches. Ready to use. No mixing required. Indoor use. Odorless. Non-staining. Residual killing power. Kills roaches. Alright, so they're trying to sell it based on roaches. They've got some... Looks like Adobe Pictures. Says it kills Asian ladybugs. Oh, all kinds of bugs. So let's see, what are the actives in this? Is it any of you going to tell me? It uh, doesn't say. Let's go to a different site. Um, it's probably tea tree oils and stuff like that, which is typically what they put in an all-natural pesticide. Cedarwood oils, things like that. Um, says it works good on stink bugs, somebody said. Uh... Everyone's saying it works on stink bugs and ladybugs and stuff like that. Um, it's about 60% five-star reviews on Amazon. I cannot figure out what is in this stuff. And it does not... Oh, there we go. Delta Methrin. Oh, it's Delta Methrin. No, I don't recommend that at all. So that chemical is Delta Methrin, and Delta Methrin does kill bed bugs... But, or at least it used to, but the bed bugs have developed quite an immunity to it because it's one of the ingredients they use in one of the Harris line of products. And I would not be surprised if someone like that makes this. But yeah, it's, it would kill stink bugs. It'll probably kill ladybugs. It'll kill, you know, lots of other bugs in the house, ants and stuff like that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Samantha says, hey, Jason, I spotted a bed bug on my ceiling near the ceiling fan in my bedroom. I do live in an apartment building. Do you recommend me putting some crossfire along the walls and around the fan fixture? Um, I recommend treating around the baseboards, crown molding. I don't usually recommend using it around like ceiling fan mix, uh, fixtures or wall fixtures or lighting because you don't want to get it near any kind of electrical outlets because you don't want to cause a short. But um, I would treat around the crown molding and the baseboards. Absolutely. It will stop the bed bugs from crawling up those areas. Uh, Gary Carr says, I've never seen any in my bathroom, but a gallon goes a long way, so I spray it as well because I get them up the middle of the night in the first place I go in the morning. That's right. Yep. Yep. But I did actually, so the, the guy that I treated, his uh, we were finding the bed bugs in his bathroom, actually living around his commode, around his toilet. So, um, you know, they will live in and around your bathroom. Any kind of crack or crevice, those are the places the bed bugs like to try to squeeze in. And so they will squeeze in down around where the uh, toilet connects to the floor and where the cabinets and stuff connect to the wall, the bathtub. I have found bed bugs actually living around the bathtub. Um, if you've ever seen that video on my channel, I have a video where I do a bed bug treatment. It's, it's titled The Most Extensive Bed Bugs Treatment on YouTube or something like that. And if you go and watch that video and you see me doing going around and treating that guy's house in his master bathroom, which I don't show in the video... But his master bathroom, the bed bugs were actually living all around the bathtub. They were pretty severe. And he it was a single family home. But he was living, um, the bed bugs were actually living all around the tub. Uh, he had like a garden tub in his bathroom. And they were all around the top of the garden tub, around the walls, and the ceiling in the, uh, in the bathroom as well. 
So, yeah, they will absolutely live in your bathroom, especially if you've been trying to do your own pest control with products other than, like, Crossfire. So I'm trying to get comfortable here. Um, and so, yeah, it's absolutely... I, I treat the whole house. I treat it as if, you know, the whole house is infested because if you've got bed bugs, more than likely the whole house is infested. Um, the, thing, the thing about bed bugs is the same thing... All right, so if you go to a hotel and you sit your luggage down on the carpet beside the bed, the bed bug eggs will fall off of the bed. The bed bugs will. They'll crawl on your uh, luggage and stuff, and they'll, they'll hitch a ride with you. Um, if you go, if you have bed bugs in your bedroom and you walk through your room with your boots or whatever, your shoes or your slippers or whatever, um, you'll step in the eggs, and you'll, they'll stick to your clothing, and you'll track them through the house, and you can track the eggs into other rooms of the house. So you can absolutely, you should absolutely treat the whole house as if the whole house is infested. Um, one of the things that I, that I actually recommend is for like hotel treatment. So if you're going to treat a hotel room, and this goes into kind of like what I talk about, um, what, what's coming out next Tuesday on my bed bug on the hotel video. Um, it's important to treat, when you treat a hotel, if you find that a hotel has bed bugs, and you're an exterminator and you're going in to treat the rooms, you always treat the room that's the, you know, ground zero, I call it. And then this person needs to be blocked. And they need to be banned. Sorry about that. I guess I'm known now. I guess once you get 10,000 subscribers, you get crazy ass bots in your channel all the time saying stupid crap. Sorry about that, everybody. But anyway, so and now I can't remember what I was saying because that threw me for a loop. I hate when people do that. Try to sit here and talk about bugs and you get people going and promoting pornography in your chat room. This is YouTube. We're a friendly environment here. We don't need that crap. Anyway. Watch your language. Huh? Watch your language. I said crap. Is crap okay? Can we say crap? I don't know if we can say crap. Maybe we can't say crap. <sighs> so, like I was saying, when you treat a hotel, I remember it now. Um, you treat the room where the bed bugs are a problem, and then you treat all the adjacent rooms. So if you've got like a room above, room to the left, room to the right, room below. You treat all those rooms too because what will happen is the bed bugs will go into other rooms of the hotel. So you want to make sure you treat ground zero, which is the room where the problem is, and all the rooms surrounding that room as well. Uh, Majesticals, how are you doing? I am doing perfectly fine. I worked about 13 hours today. I am tired, but I'm doing good. I'm here. I'm relaxed. I'm on YouTube. I'm talking to you guys. I'm not going to talk about the election, are we? Sorry. I'm, I'm, there's enough stress around that as it is. I am not going to talk about it. <clears throat> I hope everybody else is doing okay today. Samantha says, You've been such a lifesaver for us. Crossfire will be here in a day or two. My husband and I have been religiously watching your videos since discovering our infestation. I don't, See, everybody says this. A lot of people say this. I had a lady that called me the other day, and she said that she's been watching my, vi my videos religiously. Are y'all starting like some kind of a cult? We're not going to do a cult. I'm not a cult leader. We're not going to start the cult of the Jason. That's not something we're going to do. So, just so you know. Anyway. We discovered a small nest last month. Yeah, Crossfire has been a lifesaver for me. So the reason I switched to Crossfire is because I had, I was having problems with chemical immunity. So what was going on were the bed bugs were becoming immune to the chemicals that we were using in Virginia. Most of the states in the Union had actually developed, the bed bugs had developed immunity to pesticides, the, the standard ones we were using, like Delta, Methrin, Bifenthrin, different ones. 
And Virginia was one of the last states that actually had problems with immunity issues. And so um, a few years ago, I noticed that the bed bugs weren't dying like they normally would from a chemical. And so uh, I actually, somebody called me through my, through my YouTube channel. He called me from Winchester, Virginia, and he did local pest control there. And uh, he said that he was using Crossfire, that he had started using Crossfire, and that he was getting really, really good results. In fact, in the, uh, the places he was using Crossfire, they were actually... Um, they were actually having up to a year residual, still killing bed bugs a year later in hotel rooms. And so I gave it a shot and I haven't looked back since. In fact, I tell people, I said, it's the dummy chemical. Even somebody like me could use it. <laughs> It'll absolutely get rid of your bed bug problems. It works really, really, really well. So I've really been, I've really, really been pleased with it. So in fact, all right, so I've been killing bed bugs for 22 years. When I first started doing bed bugs, the very first bed bug job I did was off of Williamson Road when I was 17 in, in Roanoke, Virginia. And it was a pretty severe case of bed bugs. They had been fighting them for about five years. That was the general idea. Um, they didn't realize they were bed bugs. What happened was the, the, the boy in the house was the only one getting bit. And he had really bad mosquitoes outside his room. I mean, they were. They were seriously bad mosquitoes because I actually treated the house for mosquitoes too when I was there. And um, because they were really, they were pretty severe. But the mosquitoes actually weren't getting into the house. They weren't coming in and biting him at all. It was bed bugs. And the reason they found them is because her husband went on the graveyard shift, started coming home, like third shift or whatever, coming home really, really early in the morning at like four or five o'clock in the morning. And he saw them crawling into bed, and they had no idea what they were until he found them. And so I treated the house for the bed bugs, and I've always done three treatments, always, for which means you do your initial treatment, and then a month later you do a follow-up, and then a month later you do a second follow-up. So you do three treatments total. That's the way I've always done bed bugs. I did a lot of research. I went to the library. Of course, this is back before the Internet was really big, and you know, you, know, you had broadband everywhere. It was mostly dial-up. And the only places you could really get broadband were places like the library. And so I went to the library. I looked up all kinds of books. I read about DDT and all the different things people used to use on bed bugs, about the immunity with, um, with the uh, synthetic pyrethroids and what was going on with that and how they had pretty much developed them to replace DDT and the different things I was reading. And I found out that most people were getting the most success using a 90-day service plan. And so that's what I started doing when I was a teenager. And it's developed into up until last year, I was still doing 90 day service plans. And then, but what was happening is since I started using Crossfire, those two years I used Crossfire, I was noticing when I would go back for the second and the third treatment, I wasn't finding any bugs. I mean, it was really rare. Like one in a blue moon, I would have to go and do a follow up for and actually find bed bugs. And so I started this last year, it's, it was a year in August um, that I started just doing one time only and i just tell people you know call me if you need a second treatment and that way i can charge a whole lot less like a third less of what i was normally charging or half less to half something like that anyway i charge a lot less than what i what i uh, normally would charge and so um if they need me i can just go and do another treatment if they need me to and that way you save people money i've only had to do one follow-up in a year and i was i mean you make more money if you sell three but i just sell one and one and done, be finished with it. I've, that's, that's a long story. I'm sorry, I'm tired. If I ramble, I'm, I'm sleepy today. I'm pretty tired today. So. Does any, I, I have a question, though. So, what I was thinking about doing with this, um, yes, it is in my Amazon store, Samantha. Um, I use a B&G is what I use. It's a single gallon stainless steel, um, bra it's got a brass pump, stainless steel uh, tank, and a brass wand, and that's what I use. Um, but I recommend it. It's a professional piece of equipment, and it's, you know, you're looking at $300 to buy one. I would not buy it from Amazon. The Amazon price right now is outrageous. Let me show you, let me, um, let me actually share my screen here again. And uh, 
Let's see, is that B pump? Actually, let's do it this way. Amazon.com slash shop slash green. There we go. And so there's my store. It's not working, is it? Hmm. There we go. There it is. All right. Let's move that. Yeah, we'll leave that there like that. So here's my store right here. So if you go here and you look at this, it's uh, Amazon.com slash slops. Amazon.com slash shop slash Green Acres Pest Control LLC. And if you scroll down to, let's see, bed bug, there's ant control, fleet control, uh, bed bug supplies. There we go. If you go there, and I've got some steamers here. These are pretty good steamers. Uh, they've got the heat room. If this is mainly, honestly, I put these here as for like personal belongings if you're wanting to. Uh, heat treat personal belongings where you know the bed bugs can't actually get away and go into the wall. I recommend something like that. But um, and there's your gun. But this is this is actually what you were asked about. This is a BNG. If you click that and you go to that, it's um. Let's see now. That's that's for a fair of a price. The other day I looked it up and it was like over six hundred dollars. And I would not pay more than you know three fifty to three eighty for one of these. I wouldn't pay more than that. But that's what I use. In fact, I've got three of those and I use them all the time and so actually frequently bought together check this out frequently bought together a bng a bottle of crossfire check it out and not funny i wonder why i wonder why it wouldn't that be hilarious if that's because of me because <laughs> that's what i recommend <laughs> it's hilarious but anyway um majestical said if i have a small bed bug infestation, would I need to worry about spraying or treating it again? I'm going to buy your BNG spray. Okay, so if I have a small bed bug infestation, would I need to worry about spraying or treating it again? Yes, absolutely treat again. You don't want a, a small infestation becomes a large infestation, so yes, treat it again. Uh, I'm going to buy the BNG spray from your site. Okay, Arvansiani says, when you use Crossfire on the baseboard, do you treat the whole house baseboard or just the bedroom i treat the whole house baseboard throughout the entire house i do the whole thing all through and and crown molding too samantha says it may seem expensive excessive but i've got sticky traps on my bed headboard around the bed to prevent them from coming out trying hard to keep them in the room any tips on crossfire use as much appreciated you rock i appreciate your time so if you want to learn about how to use Crossfire, if you go to YouTube, all right, go to YouTube here like this, and let's search for Green Acres, Green Acres Pest Control. And there I am, there's my logo right there. So we'll go here and, oh look, I'm live. Wow, that's great. You should subscribe right there. Click that button. And then after you click that button, click this search right here and then type bed bug. So these are all the videos I've got on my channel about bed bugs. So um, if you scroll down, the most extensive, in fact, you could probably just search extensive. Extensive. And there we go. The most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube. Learn how to DIY bed bugs. And you go to this video. It's two years old. Let's mute that because I don't want to hear it. If you go to this video, it actually shows you. See, I skip it forward a little bit. You can flip up the mattress. I show you how to treat the mattress right here. I show you what you want to do. You want to take. See, I already took this off. I actually laid it back down and I thought, you know, I need to film this. So I flipped it back up and I showed people. But I took this whole piece of felt off of the bottom. And you treat inside. See, I show you. There's the B and G right there. And I treat inside the bed. I peel back. See, I show the bed bugs. See how bad this is—a really seriously bad infestation of bed bugs. And you can see them all living in the cracks and everything. So that's the video you want to watch if you want to actually learn how to do a bed bug job. That's 
that's the video you need to watch. But those are, that's, this is actually, they're mostly all dead on that bed from the, the crossfire. Because what I did was I actually sprayed it first, laid the bed back down, and I thought, you know, I need to show people how to do this. So I picked it back up and showed them. They had already died in just a few seconds. It took me to lay the bed back down and pick it back up again. So, but yeah, I definitely recommend going and looking at that specific video right there. Because that's the one I usually send people to. The only thing I don't show in that video, and I keep kicking myself, I wish I had, is how to treat the baseboards. I really do wish I had included that on the video, but you do need to treat your baseboards, and I do have other videos about that now. So let's go back. Let me show you. If you go back to my channel, and you go back to here, and let's search. Let's see if baseboard is in there. Baseboards. Let's see. Um, these are newer videos here. Bed bugs. Don't miss these bed bug hiding spaces. How to treat your home for bed bugs. Let's see. Let's look at that one. That's probably the one. Let's see. This is why you mute it so I don't have to deal with that. Alright. So let's see. Let's go here. Skip forward a little bit. Oh, look. There's a bed bug. Right there. Um. Oh, there we go. So if you go to this video and you skip forward to about nine minutes, it'll show you... Let's close that ad. Right there. See, you've got the baseboard right there. And if you wait just a minute, it'll show you how I treat the baseboard. But see, if you look in those cracks, there's a bed bug right there. Right there. Just to show you they hide in the baseboards. See, and you want to treat. You don't use a lot, very little. See, just enough to get it to lay in that crack. See, it's not that much, really. Honestly, it's not much. So it goes a long way. Bed bug treatment, you know, with Crossfire, really goes a long way. You don't have to use a lot. You don't want it to pull. So let's see. DAO says, "How do we get a job in pest control?" Do we need training? Um, to do pest control in Virginia, it depends on state to state. Every state is different. In Virginia, in order to get hired, I mean, you get hired on right away as an apprentice, but to get a, an actual license, you have to apprentice for a year, and then you have to pass the state exam to get your pest control license in the state of Virginia. And then you can have your license, but you do have to um, apprentice for a year under someone with a license. Danielle says, my apartment doesn't want to provide the laundry room with hot water. Is it necessary to have hot water when washing your garments, or is the dry cycle sufficient? Okay, so typically I recommend if bed bugs to, to do laundry, to, to wash your laundry in hot water, and to use a hot the hottest cycle possible on the dryer. You may be able to get away, so... Oh, excuse me, I'm tired. Oh, so what I, what I usually recommend people do with their clothes in the first place is throw them in the dryer first. So that way you heat your uh, clothes up hot first, and you will catch bed bugs in the lint trap. If you find that there are bed bugs in your lint trap, then you want to wash your clothes. You don't necessarily have to have hot water. The most important thing, because the water, the water needs to be above 100 and 25 degrees to kill the bed bug eggs and if your thermostat is not set typically most thermostats are set to 115 to 120 at most you're not your water is actually not going to be hot enough to kill the bed bug eggs those are what survive but your dryer will exceed the 120 degree temperature of a hot water heater and so uh, while bed bugs need 118 degrees to die the eggs need 125 degrees. So that way, if, as long as you make sure that your dryer is really hot and you have good hot air, good heating element, then you absolutely will kill your bed bugs with the dryer only. But I do usually recommend hot water. So um, you don't have to have hot water, democracy. My neighbor has a flea infestation and the fleas are coming over. She seems to not mind it, but it's driving my family and I crazy. 
you may need to treat with, I mean, so your neighbor, how close is your neighbor? How far away is your neighbor? Is it like an, is it like an apartment or is it like a next door neighbor? Good stuff says, can we use Alpine to kill mites? Do mites crawl? No, Alpine's not a miticide. It won't kill mites. Uh, DAO says, Gustav, what kind of mite? Uh, Gary says, I don't think my second spray was necessary. Crossfire's magic. Bed bugs was so easy to get rid of than roaches. Oh, yeah. Well, now, roaches are pretty easy to get rid of, too, with Alpine. I did a house, honestly, I, I, I get surprised every single time I use Alpine WSG because um, Alpine is just absolutely a magical chemical. So I did a, a trailer. I did a trailer last month, and I went and did the follow-up yesterday. When I went into the trailer, the roaches were falling off the ceiling, raining everywhere after I was done in there. And I don't just use Alpine. I mean, I've got flushing agents and baits and stuff too, but typically on a cleaning a clean out, I usually just use Alpine and flushing agent. That's all I do. So, so a flushing agent is like a um, it's a chemical used like a aerosol that you use in the cracks and the crevice in the wall that you may not be able to get your uh, BNG to treat inside. And so you, it's it's typically like a can of like PT565 or some kind of a uh, aerosol flushing agent and with a with a WD-40 type tube on the end of it so that you can stick it in the wall and actually fog the inside of the wall to force the roaches out because roaches love to live in the wall. And that forces them out and forces them to crawl through the chemical that actually kills them better. And so um, that's what I do on a, on a roach clean out. And it usually takes me anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to do a roach clean out. And I always think when I go into those really, really horrible ones that, oh, there's no way this is going to be so bad. Because I lived through an era when it was really difficult to get rid of cockroaches. And I, uh, I actually went through and treated the guy's house. I went by last month and the roaches were almost completely dead. I mean, there's, I think overall in the entire house, I counted like 10 in the whole house. And they are literally, they were everywhere in the whole house. And they're not hardly anything at all now. So it's a magic chemical. It usually only takes me about two to three visits to completely eliminate a cockroach infestation using Alpine WSG. Um, Samantha says, do you recommend any more affordable alternatives to a BNG sprayer? I need to do a video on tanks. I have not got the tanks together yet, Samantha, to do the video, but I'm going to do a... Um, I actually, let me add, I'm going to use this as a, as a springboard to ask you guys a question. It would, would you, there be any interest on the channel to do like a product review? So I was going to take some different products that I've used in the past and, and some that I use now and including equipment and stuff that I use as well. And I was going to, um, I mean, there wouldn't be very long videos. they would be like just little short videos that I would do. Um, about different types of pesticides I've used and, and different types of equipment and what I, whether I would recommend them or not. And I was just wondering if that was something that you would be interested in, if that's something that the channel would be interested in, if you guys thought that that would be something that you would want to watch. Um, and so I am going to, I was thinking about doing that, but I was launching that series with um, a, a product review on three different types of sprayers. I was going to use a BNG and two other alternative competitive type sprayers to kind of compare to see which one would work the best um, for the average, you know, homeowner, what you would want to buy to, to do things on your own. And so, because the, the BNG is rather expensive, especially if you're only spraying just for one thing, like a bed bug job every now and then. And so, just in just curiosity, you know, if that's something that you would actually be interested in, if I would do something like that. So, but um, I was thinking of it. Um, so, Avandi said, can I spray the sofa with the small, regular, simple plastic tray with Crossfire? Yes, you can. You can spray your sofa with Crossfire. Um, the best thing for bird mites, I actually have a video on bird mites. So if you go to my channel and you search bird mite. Um, how to get rid of bird mites, guaranteed, three easy steps. So let me... share... copy... 
and I'm gonna post that in chat. And that's for bird mites. My wife making all kinds of noise on her computer over there. She's playing games, probably. Mm -hmm. If you guys are on my Discord, if any of you now my Discord's in the link below. I actually got that fixed uh, today. I, I, I linked it to, to below. There's an actual Discord link. If you guys join my Discord, let me show you what it looks like. <laughs> so, well, that's that other spray. So there's me. That's me, and that's Rory, and that's Emma. They're really little in that picture. Kids make you feel so old, seriously. But, so, if you go to my Discord, I got other Discords on here, too. Um, this is my Discord. Alright? And this is, this is my wife, Acres, right here, playing World of Warcraft. She's always in... A game. Always. Always. See me? I'm down. I'm down here. Green Acres. That's me. That's me. That's her. That's me. The funny thing is, is that's I'm actually her. sitting here just reading the news. So, and she'll sit there and she'll read the news, but she'll leave her game running. Because Discord's really something that was made for, you know, like gamers and stuff. A lot of gamers and stuff use it so they can communicate with one another if they play games online. But I like to use it through, uh, well, I use it for that too. But I also use it to chat with you guys. And and if you're ever interested in, in trying to get a hold of me pretty quickly, Discord's usually the best way to do it. And there are other people there that may even be able to link you to a video and help you. Um, I've got some really, really helpful um, people on the channel that actually do um, send videos. Because I've got like over 200 videos on my channel and it's kind of hard sometimes to pull up the links and get them. But they, I don't know how you guys do it on Discord, but they're quick on the trigger, man, to, to post that stuff. So it's I would re definitely recommend that if you've ever used it before, they, they actually do make an app for the phone that you can use. And it's almost like texting and you can text me that way too. And it, it allows you to send pictures and everything. So it's a real easy, quick way to get a hold of me if you ever need to actually ask me a, a question specifically. Um, and it's easier to do that than to try to kick me on, you know, Facebook or Twitter or something like that. So, also, if you're ever interested in sending me any pictures or tweeting me or anything, you can always tweet at GreenAcresPC. Both me and my wife both monitor that Twitter, so you can always tweet me there if you're interested in, uh, like, asking questions or you need to, you know, need to ask me a question or anything like that. So, um, anyway. I just wanted to get that out there and show you. So if anybody ever gets on the Discord and you think I'm playing video games all day, I'm actually working. She can play video games. She leaves her game online all the time. She don't play them all day either. But no, I'm running around chasing kids all day long. I know chasing kids all day long is a, that's a game in itself, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's see if we can keep the kids alive today. Let's keep this one from jumping off the bed. Getting a gash in his head. Yeah, my son, my two-year-old, he decided that uh, he was going to get four stitches before he turned two, and he jumped off of a chair and hit his head on the floor, and I had to take him to the... Of course, the best time of the year to go to the hospital is right now, you know, just kidding. Um, but he had to wait in line at the hospital because he had to get stitches. He's fine and all, but, you know, his birthday was back in October, so that happened like in September. Uh, so DAO says, do a video on tanks and PPE, proper filling practices, please. Lots of people spill crossfire on themselves. Yeah, I know. I, I do need to do one of those. Um, by the way, if you get enough crossfire on you, it'll make... You're crazy. Um, I would be interested in the product reviews, says Samantha. Gustav says, hey, Jason... How do you throw stuff from the vacuum after vacuuming? If you see a shot back, can you throw water? Okay. Now I don't understand. How do you throw stuff from vacuum after vacuuming if you use a shot back? So how do you throw the stuff away? I'm not sure if that's what you're asking me or not. In my state of South Carolina, you need to do training, pass the exam, and pay a fee to become a private applicant. Yeah, you do have to pay a fee. I mean, there is a licensing fee that you have to pay for. Um, June, July says, Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for your help. 
what's your advice on treating a lot of books? Um, now that's what I would recommend for treating books. Oh, so Gustav says yes. So um, to empty a shop vac, I mean, is it just dust and stuff or is it actual garbage? I mean, if it's actual garbage, you can't take it outside, but I would dump it in a trash bag and take the trash outside, put it in the garbage. That's what I would do if it was just a shop vac. Um, take it and empty it outside though. You know, don't empty it in the house. Take a shop vac outside, take the lid off and dump it over in a trash bag and then uh, throw it away. That's what I would do. Uh, I, if you're going to use a shop vac, I'd use the ones with the washable filters, that, you know, those kind of foam filters, and then wash it really, really good and make sure that you don't get any eggs or any residual bed bugs, uh, anything like that. Oh, are you using like a wet vac? So throw out the water in the sink is okay. Will it get reinfested? How do I stop myself? See, I don't... Re oh, fleas. Fleas in the vacuum. Okay. So that's really hard. That's a really hard thing to say. The problem with fleas, you want to throw... You do want to empty out your vacuum outside. If you have problems with fleas in your vacuum cleaner, you definitely need to have empty your vacuum outside you do still need to have the washable filters that go inside the, the shop vac so you can wash it out. Um, I've had customers tell me that they've done this and they've done that. I don't really recommend doing any of those things, and I'm not going to repeat the stuff I've said in the past because people believe that I'm trying to give them that kind of uh, advice, and I'm not. Um, but there are things you can do to your shop vac that I know that people have done before that will kill bugs. But it's, the thing is, is it's not safe for you to, to circulate that stuff through the air while you're vacuuming. And so um, I just recommend taking it outside and emptying it outside into a trash bag and throwing it away. Uh, you can rinse it out down the sink, you know, but the problem is, is that you run the risk of the fleas jumping out of the shop back if they're alive. So, um, so, what, so June July says, what is your advice on treating a lot of books? So... I'm going to share my screen again. Let's let's take this off. Uh, so to treat books, if, I mean, if, if you really need to treat your books, um, this is where you would want to do like a heat. So this is one of the reasons I have these little heat rooms. And it's also, I also have them, let's just go here. Let's go to the Canada room. I have a couple of them listed here. Uh, get a cheap one. Don't get a don't get one of these. These are for like whole. You could put like furniture in this one. This is so big here, but this is a heat chamber. Now I don't recommend heat treatments for like your house, but this is a smaller heat room, so it's got a little portable heater there, and you want to set your books up so they so the air can like circulate around. Now that's really kind of annoying, isn't it? How it's doing that, but um, see how it's got these racks, so you can put your books in these racks right here. You can sit them on top of these racks and you can allow, it'll allow the heat to circulate around your books. And so that's what I would probably recommend to save your books is getting something like that. Um, that will work. That will kill the bed bugs in your books. Uh, another thing is if, if, you're, if you're having issues with bed bugs living in your belongings and you don't want to have to invest in all this heat stupid crap like this, if you just leave the stuff in the room where you're treating, um, leave it in your, like, you know, you could stack it up beside the bed or something like that. Uh, if you sleep on the bed and you treat your bed with crossfire and you sleep in your bed, the, the bed bugs are going to come to try to get to you and they're going to crawl through the crossfire and they're going to die. Um, it's really a very safe pesticide. It's not going to hurt you. You can sleep in the bed the night you use it. You just want to wait until it's dry before you make your bed. And then you can sleep right in the bed. So... Um, that's and the bed bugs are not going to live in the books forever. They're going to come out to bite you eventually, and when they do, they'll crawl over the surfaces and they'll die. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't recommend for my regular customers. I don't recommend that they have to remove their furniture uh, from the bedroom. I don't recommend that they take all their uh, clothes out of their dressers or their chest of drawers. I don't usually recommend that they empty out their closets because there's not really any reason to do that. If you treat, if you do a really thorough job on the bed and the baseboards and the crown molding and the different places around that the bed bugs are naturally gonna be attracted to, like sofas, sofa beds, lazy boy recliners, and places like that, the bed bugs are gonna crawl out of the neighboring furniture. They're gonna crawl out of the closet. They're gonna crawl out of your books, and they're gonna crawl across the bed, and they're gonna die. So 
it's not something you don't need to be paranoid that, oh, what about this? The bed bugs might be in that. Or what about that? The bed bugs are going to be over there. Or what about this nightstand? Oh, I know they're in the nightstand. Well, the thing is, if you take the drawers out of the nightstand, you can treat the nightstand, but it's not required. I, I never, I haven't treated dressers or nightstands in forever. I just don't do it. And the bed bugs die. They just die. They all die. I, I don't have to do it. You don't have to treat the furniture. You just have to treat the places you're going to sleep your beds and your couches and stuff like that. DAO says, what on oh, that crossfire is for the safe? I'd rather have that in DDT. That's true. I'd rather use crossfire than DDT. Yeah, that's right. See, the eggs, eggs hatch uh, usually within six to ten days. Bed bug eggs hatch within six to ten days. They can last several months, but most of the time, in most instances, it's only six to ten days. If you keep your heat, use your heat, you know, and, and you keep your house warm um, or, you know, comfortable, 70 degrees, 68 degrees, you know, somewhere that you like to, you know, like to live, your normal living temperature, bed bug eggs are going to hatch and they're going to die. I don't think aerosol is very good. Um, Jamie Washington asks, I live in New York State. What do you think about crossfire aerosol sprays? Um, the problem with aerosols is they have propellants in the can that, that tamper with the way the pesticide's designed to work. Um, it does aerosol, crossfire aerosol is going to be better than pretty much any other aerosol you can use for bed bugs. It does have a mild residual, but it's not going to last as long as a concentrate mixed in a tank. That if you mix 13 ounces of crossfire in a one gallon of water, you're going to have something that's going to outlive a aerosol. And aerosols they have very little pesticide in them i mean a little bitty can that's you know that big is only going to what 20 ounces and and it's and it's all compressed you just so you're not going to get that much out of the can and uh that's 20 ounces of mixed mix solution it's it, a gallon is way more than 20 ounces and so you're going to get a lot more for your money by just getting a 13 ounce bottle and mixing it yourself Gustav says, can fleas or mites be on books? I don't really see any of them on the books, but most vacuum, but I must vacuum the shelf, right? Are mites and fleas on walls and ceilings too? Mites and fleas, mites are, mites can be anywhere, but fleas are typically only on furniture and flooring. Um, they can only be on books though, if they jump, I mean, I reckon fleas could be on books if they get up on a shelf. If you've got a cat jumps up on a bookshelf or lays on top of a book, the fleas will be there. It's not a normal place fleas would be, though. So, Jamie can't get concentrate, crossfire concentrate, because she lives in New York. They won't deliver in New York. But I'm going to show you a trick. How to skirt the law with Jason Akers. So... If you go to eBay, let's do some eBay here. Let's try Crossfire on eBay. Oh, look, there's some Crossfire. Two bottles of Crossfire. Not for New York. So this one says not for New York. So they're not going to sell it to you in New York. So let's see. Crossfire bed. Wow. That's, that's, that's 10 gallons. That, there's no way that's 10 gallons. There's no way they're going to sell 10 gallons for that. Um, there's some aerosol. Let's see. Not for New York. So let's see the one that says it, that it does, uh, says no sales to New York. All right. Let's keep looking here. No sales to New York. No sales to New York. No sales to New York. Okay, so you got to find it from someone that doesn't know. That doesn't know. So, so you have to get it from an independent seller that doesn't know you can't sell Crossfire to New York. So that's what you have to do. That's how you're going to do. <laughs> and I know people. So that's, this is why I'm pointing out to the Discord. Because I do have friends in Discord that post links and show how to get this stuff. So I would recommend you join my Discord and ask around. There are some people in my Discord from both Canada and New York that have been able to get Crossfire. 
and they may be able to share their tricks better with you. But one of my one of my friends on Discord actually did get it from eBay, and another lady got it from Canada. I think she got it to Canada from eBay too. So it just you know that's the thing when you deal with these online type of marketplace type places. If the seller doesn't know what the law is, whether it's against the law to sell it or ship it or not, they don't know. They're completely ignorant of the law. They're just trying to make a buck off of their pesticide. Then they'll ship it to you and they don't know what they're doing. So that's what I recommend. How safe is crossfire for dogs? I can't help to spray and drip some on the floor and I'm afraid the dog is going to lick it. So you need to remove your pets from the house before you apply pesticides. This is whether you're spraying for fleas, or ticks, or spiders, or roaches, or bed bugs. If you're spraying your house, you need to remove your pets from the house. And the reason of this is because you don't want your pet licking the chemical. Um, Crossfire is extremely safe for mammals. It really doesn't hurt mammals. Um, but, you don't want your dog eating pesticide. I don't care what the label says, whether it's safe or not, you do not want your dogs eating pesticide. So you remove your dog from the house until the chemical is dry. The dog come in the house, it's not gonna get hurt. So even if it drips on the floor, as long as it dries before the dog comes back in the house, it won't hurt the dog. So that's what you wanna do. Um, what I recommend that all people do, and let me see if it'll let me do this. So if I go to my book. So I have a book and it's on, I wrote one about how to kill bed bugs. And I'm going to go look for it real quick on my Amazon page. Um, I think it, I haven't been on there in so long. I should be able to give it away for free. So if you do... All right, your books, we want to promote and advertise. And I want to do a free book promotion, create a free book promotion. And we're gonna start it on Friday the 13th. Ain't that your lucky day? And we'll end it on the 17th. Save changes. Saving promotion. All right. So, let me show you my book. So, if you go to Amazon and then you search for Green Acres Best Control, that's not it. Let's search for Trump, uh, Jason Akers. My name. There's my book. There's one of them. That's not the one I recommend, though. I got two. There we go. Troublesome Pest Solution. See this? Now, you can get this book for $0 on Kindle. It's Kindle Unlimited. It's free. So I offer it for free on Kindle Unlimited. So if you're a Kindle subscriber, or whatever they call it, Kindle Unlimited or whatever, or I think even Amazon Prime, you can get this book for free. So you can click it here, and you can get it free. It's free. All right. I, I put it up for as free as I can, as often as I can. Uh, otherwise, it's like 99 cents. It's a 99 cent Kindle book. It's got um, bed bugs, cockroaches, and fleas listed. So I'd recommend going there, and you can actually pretty much figure out all you need to do to kill bed bugs. Jamie, here's an idea. Get a snail mailbox in Jersey. Yeah, I know people that do that. They get it. They, they, they've actually had it shipped to Jersey, gone and picked it up there, and brought it back. Um. Yeah, yeah. So there are ways that you can get around the law and try to get the crossfire shipped to you if you want to try to do it yourself. It's not illegal in the state of New York to have crossfire. Um. It's not illegal to have it, so if you purchase it in another state and have it in New York, it's not against the law to have it. Um, what it is, is it's against the law to sell it to people because they want only 
uh, licensed exterminators to apply it. So even licensed exterminators, they can get it, they can use it, but, and this is the same, I believe, I don't think it's that way in Canada, actually. I, I was going to say it was, but I don't think it is. I don't think it's actually even legal at all in Canada. I think it's outlawed chemical in Canada. It's not outlawed in New York. It's, it's, um, you can't actually uh, buy the chemical in New York unless you're licensed. So they're, they're trying to crack down on the private individual being able to get a hold of Crossfire and using it theirself. That's what it's about. So, and there are a couple other states that, that um, are considering the same legislation New York has against Crossfire, but right now it's only New York. It's the only state that has that type of legislation. So. So, are there any other questions? I've been on for about an hour. I usually try to keep my live streams down to an hour. Um, if there's any other questions at all, I, uh, I'm glad to answer anything before I log off for the night. Uh, Gary says, you got to spray your baseboards. So, I lock the dog up somewhere until it dries. It only takes 10 minutes to dry. So that's what the label. So if you go to your label, let me let me go over a label. I'm actually I haven't done that in a while. So let's go ahead and go over here and search Crossfire label. And that looks like a good one. So this is a Crossfire label. This is how to actually read and understand your label. So these are your active ingredients. And then, this, so this, this is what I meant earlier. So I was talking about fibronyl butoxide. Fibronyl butoxide is something that is in um, Crossfire. This is what is actually a uh, the catalyst that allows for these other two chemicals to actually work well. So we go down here. It says for indoor use only. All right, don't use it outside. It's only for indoor use. Bed bugs only live inside anyway. It's only to kill bed bugs. That's what it's for. It kills bed bugs. Okay? For best results, vacuuming surfaces is recommended prior to treatment. Spray bed bugs and eggs directly wherever possible. Apply as a pin stream, coarse spray, or low pressure spray for cracking crevice, carpet perimeter, and direct spray applications in and around non food areas where bed bugs and their eggs may hide or harbor. For example, on or around baseboards, floorboards, millwork, bed frames, headboards, wall hangings, furniture, door and window frames, walls, closets, window, treatments beneath floor coverings, as well as other non-washable items that may come into contact with bed bugs, such as luggage. So if you're a traveler, treat your luggage, your shoes, and your backpacks. So for those of you that always ask, can I treat my shoes? Yes, you can treat your shoes with Crossfire. It says to do it. It actually says that on the label, to do it. It says to do it, to kill them. If treating a pet's living environment, spray on or around pet beds, bedding floors, sleeping areas, and furnishings. This product can also be applied with a paintbrush to walls, baseboards, floorboards, behind wall hangings, like pictures and clocks, and other similar areas. So, it's a very broad label. And it says here, mattress application, and this is one of the most unique things about Crossfire, is that Crossfire can be directly applied to mattresses, box spring surfaces. For porous surfaces, such as mattresses and carpet perimeter areas, apply until thoroughly damp, but not wet. That means don't, don't get it dripping wet. You don't want it that wet. You just want it damp, but not wet. Infested bed linens should not be treated. Because like they said up here, in this little paragraph here, it says all non-launderable uh, things. So if it can be laundered, like bed linens, you should just wash them in the washing machine. These should be removed 
tightly sealed in a plastic bag, laundered and dried at high temperatures prior to reuse, vacuuming surfaces prior to treated is highly recommended, using a pinch treatment so they go blah blah blah, so all that. Um, this product, okay, so these are your use restrictions. And this is where you're not supposed to use this chemical ever, all right? This product is not for use on humans or animals. Do not spray product directly on pets. Not for broadcast use. So broadcast means you can't spray your entire floor. You are not supposed to spray your whole floor. You are not supposed to spray your ceilings. You are not supposed to spray your walls. It is not for a broadcast use. Do not use in commercial food feed processing preparation food stores or serving areas. In the home, all food feed processing surfaces and utensils should be covered during treatment and thoroughly washed before use. Cover or remove exposed food or feed. So cover your stuff because it might drift, and especially if you're spraying crown molding above head, it's going to drift. It might land on things. Remove pets, birds, cover fish aquariums before spraying. And this should be any time you ever apply pesticides, you should always cover your aquarium. Always you will kill your fish if you don't. This product will stain water-safe fabric surfaces. However, care should be... Sh this product will not stain water-safe fabrics and surfaces. However, care should be taken to test inconspicuous area for staining prior to use. Do not allow adults, children, or pets to enter the treated area until the sprays are dry. So be gone out of the house for two to three hours after you apply it. Do not apply to plants or crops. Do not treat areas when occupants are present. Do not apply as a space spray, which means fog, like fogging the actual air around you. You're not supposed to treat that way. Do not wet articles to the point of runoff or drip. Do not use treated articles until spray has dried. So don't sleep in your bed until after um, it's dry. If you want to let it dry. And then instead it gives you your mixing instructions, 13 fluid ounces per gallon. And this is the percentages that you're left with when you're done. Uh, bed bugs, uh, it's for bed bugs. That's the only pest listed. Some other labels will show other pests, um, but this is the only pest. That's it. It's only for bed bugs. So those of you that ask, will it kill fleas? Will it kill spiders? Will it kill roaches? No, it's only for bed bugs. Um, one gallon for thousand square feet. And this is if you were to treat a thousand square feet, which if you figure on linear footage, you actually should be able to treat your entire home with one gallon or less. Because uh, I doubt you're going to have an equal to a thousand square feet in linear footage. Apply as a coarse wet spray uh, spot treatment. So that's the way you're supposed to treat. <clears throat> and then it says, um, notice this product, baby tank mix. It says here to prepare the diluted spray, fill the sprayer tank half full total water. So this is one thing that DAO was asking that I do a video on. He asked me if I would do a video on how to properly mix pesticides safe way, how to safely do it. All right, all labels will tell you how to mix spray. I am gonna do a video on how to do that though. But to prepare the diluted spray, fill the sprayer tank with half the total water to be used, add the crossfire, then add the remaining water to the spray tank to achieve the final application volume. So basically what they're saying is you wanna fill your tank half full, pour your crossfire in, fill it the rest of the way, shake it up real good. Uh, close the spray tank, shake thoroughly to ensure proper suspension. For optimal results, solutions should be used within 24 hours of being prepared. Spray tank solutions should be shaken prior to each use or if application is interrupted. Which, so just constantly mix it up. Make sure it's well mixed all the time. So That's Crossfire. That's the light. Riveting stuff, I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> so that's it. Really. I mean, if I showed you any other label and compared to Crossfire, Crossfire is like four pages. I mean, this PDF, it's four pages, and most of it is just telling you what's in it. Um, but it's, it's, it's really simple. It's very easy to understand. Uh, just about anybody could use it. Some of the chemicals that I recommend on this channel, uh, like I do have some pesticides on my, that I mentioned on my bird mites that are a little more complicated to use because they, they're for lots of different bugs and there's different mixing ratios you're supposed to use for different types of bugs. Crossfire is just for bed bugs. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I think anybody can use this. Uh, you don't have to be a uh, professional. You don't have to be a licensed professional to be able to do this. You don't have to be trained. Um, if you watch my videos and you go, like I said earlier in the video, if you rewind back and look, uh, I go over the video that I made on the most extensive bed bug treatment. If you just watch what I do there, you can wing it and you should be able to get rid of your bed bugs. 
I've helped hundreds of people get rid of their bed bugs on their own. Um, just people just watch me do what I do and they're able to do it themselves. So I know that it's possible. Um, but anyway, Greg says, my last fumigator refused to spray the floor for the flea infestation. Is that right? No. I mean, it depends on what chemical they're using. But typically for a flea infestation, you want to do a broadcast application. You want to treat the entire floor. It just depends on what they're using. But I know Alpine WSG, that's the labeled recommended way you're supposed to get rid of fleas. Is you're supposed to treat the floor. Um, that's what I use for fleas. So... Um, I don't know what they used. They may not have been allowed to treat the floor. It just depends on what chemical they were using at the time. So, you guys have a really great night. I have talked myself to death. I've worked all day today. I have My voice is out. So, I am going to get on to bed, and I'm going to see you guys next week. Look for my video. I am actually going to do a little bit of video editing, so I will be on Discord later tonight. If you want to talk some more there, I'll be there to chat. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of video editing tonight before I head to bed because I need to work on my um, hotel video. It's going to be a really good one. It's, I think it's really, really good. It's what people have been needing to see, to hear uh, how to... I mean, we're coming up on Thanksgiving and Christmas. I know that there's this thing going around and people are worried about, you know, whatever, uh, whether you're going to Thanksgiving or not this year or Christmas or not this year. I think the information on how to avoid bed bugs when, when dealing with hotels is very important. And there are very good tips in this new video that I'm going to put out this next Tuesday. So I'm going to go ahead and get to start trying to edit that. And I will be on Discord to chat with anyone interested in talking with me tonight. So you guys have a really great night. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week, Thursday night. Uh, typically, it's between 9 and 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I will see you later. Y'all have a great night. I appreciate it. And um, hope y'all sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs>